I wanted to jump in and uh, join Chris on this last little bit here with, with Tony and Carmen. When we were talking about this interview series with, with the fans, it was Chris's idea to do a roundtable discussion. It was like, you know what? I don't think that's ever really been done in Stargate before. So I really wanted to thank you both and thank Chris for thinking of this kind of orientation for doing this, mm. of the father's figures on the series. Mm. So thank mm. you both for, for being here. Thank you. And this wouldn't be You know, be if you had a little bit of like single malt scotch or something. <laughs> you really get the inside yeah. scoop. We, we, we can do this again if you okay. want. So we can make it a little bit more interesting next time. But all this is happening because the fans wanted it to happen. Is Can you believe that we're 20 years strong on this thing and people still starve for new content? Mm. That's amazing. Why? Why is that? <laughs> well, I, I, I mean... We were talking earlier about how some shows, uh, you know, how dark sci-fi has gotten right. in a kind of way. And, and that was the great thing. The comment that always strikes me the most is when all of a sudden you're at a, con a convention and you meet fans, and it, it's not just one fan. There's three generations there. It's an elderly woman with a middle-aged man with a child who, you, you know, who watch the elderly woman and the middle-aged man, watch the mother and son, and now they're watching it with the child of the man. And the fact that it was a generational show, I think, is, uh, is really uh, yeah. sort of important. And it was, uh, it was a positive show, you know what I mean? Yes, like the point Chris made, which was wonderful, uh, and I don't want to repeat it because, uh, you know, the, the, Tony just said it about uh, it's all a dystopian post-apocalyptic vision now. And Chris said with Stargate, there, there was hope. Yeah. And, and that's a beautiful thing we need in the world today more than ever. Mm. And there was this wonderful synchronicity with, with, with the characters, w with them working together. Uh, there was something magical in whatever the ingredients that were in that show that, that made it as uh, uh, popular and as phenomenal as, as it was, and it continues to live, you know? Yeah. I think one of the four of them is, is right here, yes. right now. Yes, Because Chris and I were talking separately. RDA and Michael Greenberg set the tone, yes. you know? And if you didn't have a thick skin, you weren't going to make it on that series. You wouldn't be invited back again. So I think that that is a testament to, to you guys. Well, yeah, I mean, it. it well, you just had to uh, be collaborative mm -hmm. and uh, you just had to be game, for lack of a better word. Mm -hmm. You just have to be game for the experience. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, Our old mentor made a wonderful point, Milton Katsalas. He says the the secret to success in this industry is the ability to get along with others collaborative effort because we're all working together mm -hmm. and if anyone goes on snits or you know ego trips or whatever they're gone you know uh, it's people who appreciate each other and, uh, and and working together one of the things that was frustrating to me about how the show wrapped even though we had ten friggin seasons and two wonderful DVD movies um, you and I, Carmen, have talked about this before, about the, the bittersweetness of threats and getting to say goodbye. Yeah. Selmak yeah. and Jacob saying yeah. goodbye to Amanda and the show and you having that arc. You and I, Tony, we talked a few years ago about how you would like to go out with a bang. And you're still... Potentially I'm out still there somewhere, around. you know. Still you're still being written around. in novels, yeah, for the the yeah. the, uh, the TV uh, novels, and you know, is that something that, if you could go back and do, knowing that you know, hey, that season ten was was probably it, would you ask to say, hey, you know, the last time I'm flying that cargo ship, just take me down, you know, <laughs> send me out with a bank. Do you have some a bit of of uh, unfinished business there in your mind or in your head about that character. You know, I, I never really knew when it was going to be over because I wasn't in the absolute last episode, yeah. right? Uh, so, I mean, but I knew we had a scene together where basically, you know, he has no family, has no thing, and he says, well, you are the family. I have not said this to you before, and I should have. You are the son I never had. I could not be 
more proud. And I remember that was, you know, that was it. That was the thing. Now, would I love for Grey Tech to continue and, and be around? Of course, it, it would be very interesting. Uh, but, you know, I felt, I felt like I got my shot. I felt like, you know, it was good. We just need, the only piece of business I needed to finish was this. And beyond that, it was all great, but it was anything, you know, it was really about here to here and, and everything went from him to the other people in a kind of way. Um, so I'm not really answering your question, I guess, uh, but I felt, I didn't feel cheated. I didn't feel like I was left out dangling. And as a matter of fact, because they tried to kill me so many times, <laughs> I was actually probably one of the last actors from about season eight who never worried. You know, when I used to get a script, I would say to my wife, if I wasn't home back in the day where they would deliver scripts to your house, I'd say to my wife, check it, check it, am I alive? Oh, oh my God, no, it doesn't look good. Do oh, no, no, you made it, you made it. You know, Chuck did it again, Chris, uh, oh, Chris wrote this. Yeah, okay, you're fine. So that by the end, I never worried that my character would be killed in a way that great characters were killed, like, mm, great. Yeah. like uh, uh, Carmen and Tyrrell and stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I, I felt like I, I got much out. It's, okay. That said, it's always bittersweet. Okay. I mean, I didn't want the series to end by okay. any means. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So it's your fault. He never died. If you could go back in there, would you kill him? Absolutely. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, because where there's Braytag, there's Teal. Yes, you want to see the good. tattoo? I actually have the tattoo on my back. <laughs> Carmen, you talked yes. a little bit about your, your relationship with with Amanda, that mm -hmm. father-daughter relationship, was that informed in any way? Because you have a daughter yourself. Yeah. And how much of that, you know, of your own yeah. father-daughter relationship yeah. informed that? How much of that was just you and Amanda going out for coffee and getting to know each other? Which I'm assuming that happened. So. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, well, yeah, we even used uh, stills of my own stepdaughter. Uh, in her house. On. Yeah, in yeah. Ascension. For her, uh -huh. uh, as a young kid, uh, and we used my daughter's stills with me, and uh, uh, Amanda, uh, you know, I've just ex uh, uh, really talked about her a lot. I, I, I care so much about her, but I remember in, in Threads, uh, <clears throat> in my uh, death scene, and, uh, and Amanda, was really upset because it was going to be the last time we were working together and, and was that uh, the last scene between the two of last you scene, it was oh the last my. scene the death scene and uh, she was upset I mean you know she said I can't do this right I just and, and she had to leave of course the crying was perfect for whatever was happening but it was kind of overwhelming her and uh, she just left the set for about five minutes and came back Did the scene, and it was it was emotional. It was uh, it, it, it was a wonderful experience. The the closeness and the camaraderie, and whatever you you know evolves on a set with the characters and the friendship and the years, and knowing it's it's being finalized right now. It's not going to happen anymore, and that element just came into it, and it was perfect for you know old Jacob passing away. And it was a it was a beautiful scene. And yeah. I, I loved working with her from the very first time. Uh, oh, we had a wonderful in Tokra two, I think, when uh, I take the uh, symbiote and I revived and everything. But during that scene, when uh, the old woman Joy Todd, who was wonderful, mm -hmm. you know, we had to lay down in bed next to her, and this object comes from, out of her mouth into my mouth, which was concerning. I was this kind of, <laughs> 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 the symbiote. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
she was a wonderful actor. She yeah, was, was wonderful. A good scene. But th there was a, a, a scene that, uh, Amanda and I had between that where I didn't really know if I could do it or what or this. And it was just one of those wonderful times when it all kind of uh, surfaces and you have genuine emotion uh, in a scene. I was never good at this stuff. Dad, you don't have to say anything. You gotta know one thing. How proud I am of you. I'm not good at saying those things enough. I think you just said it pretty well. Even when I thought you were this whiz satellite geek. I was proud. That's all I wanted to say. Taste it. It doesn't happen that often. No. Yeah. And uh, it happened there, and there was such a wonderful connection. And, uh, you know, it's probably one, I mean, it's one of the roles in my long, very career that uh, people associate me with uh, more than any other role. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm so grateful. It was a wonderful era. We were talking about it outside where, uh, uh, you know, uh, we could come and just have fun. And mm. I could go to Vancouver and leave the kids and the wife and the dog poop and the garbage behind and, you know, be treated uh, <laughs> in that way, you know. In those days, there would be a limo to pick you up, take you to the airport and everything, and, uh, you know, Sutton Hotel, and uh, it was a wonderful uh, period. Uh. And to be asked, right, just to be asked. Uh, it's like an, a sort of an annuity, if you will. You, put it, you, you forget, you know, uh, fans, often think that, you know, we, we make all our own choices, that, you know, we, we just, that everything's in front of us and then we choose. Well, occasionally that's true, but as often as not, we have to swing at what's pitched at us. Right. And the ability, you know, if you've come up and you've worked and you know what it is to scrape, that when you're on a show as a recurring, and all of a sudden the phone rings and they call you a couple of three or four times right. a year, you're appreciative of that. You, and you aren't going on to a set uh, often I find uh, a new guest star on a series, you're front-loaded because the other regulars have, uh, have just finished work and they need to get up to speed and so your scenes are at the beginning. So there is a little sense of prove it to me. Of, you know, there's right. a little, you know, so right. you feel a little under uh, pressure and, it, but, you know, Stargate, you were coming and joining a group of people. Right. They knew, you didn't have to prove anything to anyone, you were there, there was, you know, so it was a whole, it was a very, welcoming and uh, yes. uh, something that is certainly like Carmen I'm really really grateful for and, and Chris obviously is grateful for it in, the, in even a deeper sense choose to be the warrior we know renounce Apophis and return to us it's now or never choose I'm rewatching the show right now Tony in preparations for these these interviews, and we just I just rewatched the Threshold. Yeah. Um, and Chris and I were just talking about choose choose to be the That's warrior right. we know. Yeah. The intensity of that scene, and you had indicated earlier that you know it was never a guarantee that you were ever going to come back again. Right. You know, it was just they'll call me. Over the course of the decade that you were working on this show, how much of the mentor mentee relationship between Braytech and Teal'c? took on in real life, if at all, between between Tony and Chris Well, you know, as it, actors. It, it, obviously on screen, uh, uh, on screen it was me as the teacher and, uh, and Chris as the student, but you know, uh, off screen, Chris knew much more about the world and much more about things, so uh, you know, he would fill me in on things that I ha had no idea about, so he was very, very, uh, uh, helpful to me, but there's, there's two things that come to mind when you talk about it. One is, it was in Threshold. Uh, I must have been up several episodes later or something, because after that, uh, uh, I ran into Brad, which I very seldom did. He was coming down and he, he said, uh, hey, uh, it was really great, so I have to tell you your stuff with Chris in that scene. He says, I did not cut a single thing from that. And I thought, whoa. And that's, you know, when I knew I was, uh, you know, there, that I was. Uh, but the other one I want to say, because this, this will, uh, I once abused the mentor teacher thing. And I don't know if Chris would remember that, oh, how right. this came. We, uh, <laughs> you remember the story, I'm certain. 
We were shooting in the snow. Where are you? Where are you? Come back! And Chris, you know, being thinking and then being ahead, just before we shot, he said, uh, he, you know, it would be really interesting if, because we're training, and you're training me, and that we did it, you know, bare chested. You know, that we were out in the elements because it was snow. You know, we were up on grouse. You know, it was cold. Uh, and I, I think I guess that's a great idea. You know, it's a good idea. And then I'm thinking, and I'm in my wagon. And I'm so I, I go back up to Chris and I say, Chris, you know, I think, but, you know, because it's the teacher, you know, sort of mentor sort of thing that, you know, you should be bare chested. And so he's being going through the trial. He's going through so. the trial. So I just remember him sort of shivering on the snow pad later on. But there's a goofy moment, and I have to say, P Peter DeLuise did this. I just had, you know, because he finally rebels. And it's almost like Bray Tech is looking for that fire because, I mean, there's, you know, thousands of Jaffa students have, have come through. And there's one. And he still hasn't told him what it's about until later in that scene. He still hasn't, he still thinks he's, you know, training. For Apophis. For Apophis. It's only at the end of that scene that he, yeah. and he doesn't know which way he's going to go, really, when that scene is over. But because I know we're going there, and Peter DeLuise is directing, I said, you know, I want, I want to, we're going to face off. He finally rebels. Okay, let's do it. Student against teacher. Show me what you got. You know, but rather than it being all serious, I said, I, I said, Peter, what I want to do is I want to do a very formal, almost Asian bow to him, you know, sensei sort of bow, and he said, yeah, but then I want to give him the bop, the head. He said, no, I don't, I really don't. I said, well, just film it, film it, just see. Because, and again, it, was, it started that scene so wonderfully and so goofy. Be, oh, you're going to challenge me? Okay. Did you not know that was coming? Oh, yeah, I think Oh, okay. Yeah. But that you was know, your idea. Yeah, yeah, that was the idea. Uh, I was not prepared. There are no second chances in battle. You have ears to hear and eyes to see, but you will not learn. Shall I put us both out of our misery? And so it was a wonderful, wonderful uh, sort of arc. And um, so I, I will say, I will own up that regardless of what people think on screen that I was the uh, the teacher and he was the student off screen. He was the teacher and I was the student. So, And I'm very grateful for that. So, We've been wanting to do this for such a long time. You know, the, the special features for, for Stargate, they, they were great, but we really, as a fan, I wanted uh, more of them. And the only reason that we're, we're doing this is, is for the fans. If you could say thank you or, you know, say anything to the people who are watching this now who were hoping to produce more of these, what would it, what would it be for the three of you or for the two of you? Well, I was talking about the fans. Uh, there's no fans <clears throat> in the world like uh, Stargate SG-1 fans. Um, uh, it humbles you uh, that these people uh, love, you know, the character, the show, uh, the loyalty, the endless, the conventions. I, I get uh, requests, I don't know, m my home address seems to be out there and I get uh, two or three, uh, you know, mailings. Picture, yeah for pictures and for autographs and how much, uh, again, what Tony talked about, the generational thing, my kids, uh, me, and, uh, uh, to, but it seems like uh, this, what we do has brought people together and families together in their living mm -hmm. room and, and maybe what they saw on screen, uh, uh, I don't know, affected them in a way that there was, uh, a love and a support and uh, and a sense of humor and appreciation and I mean they show that at all the conventions and uh, uh, I just want to say uh, thank you so so much for uh, the appreciation the loyalty and uh, we're like one big family and uh, uh, extended family and uh, thanks thank you very much everyone who's ever seen it and appreciated it and uh, came to the conventions. 
Yeah, I feel the uh, same way. You know, the longevity is based on, uh, on, on your loyalty to the show and the fact that you, you allowed it to continue for so long and that it's still so active and so present uh, to all the people in the military who got solace uh, from the show and comfort. I can't tell you how pleased that makes us. We have no idea uh, where the work we, uh, we create goes to. And the fact that you, you were able to see it all over the world, uh, to the generational things, uh, to everyone. And, you know, probably on a less solemn note, there are other brands. There are other places you can go. So, I, you know, I always have lived by this little song that uh, is related to this. And, it's, uh, and I will use the other brand. You ain't nothing but a Trekkie, rockin' all the time. You ain't nothing but a Trekkie, rockin' all the time. But if you ain't seen Stargate, you ain't no friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's silly. That's silly. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. John, thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. Thank you, Dave. It was, it was such a pleasure. A pleasure. Yeah, and, thanks um, so much. Just to another 20 years. I'll say. Hey, Chris, thank you for suggesting yeah, this. Yeah, oh, it's great. Make it so much, so much easier. Thanks.